the European mountain ash, Sorbus occuparia and the rosaceae. And although it's called ash, it absolutely isn't. In fact, it's in the rose family, where the true ashes are in the olive family. One of the reasons we know it's not a true ash, if you look carefully at the pinnately compound leaves, pinnately compound similar to true ashes, the leaves are alternate on the stem rather than opposite, as are all the ashes. Unlike true ashes, the mountain ash produces a very nice flat cluster of white flowers early in the spring. And that flat cluster will turn into these orange, mushy, pome-like or apple-like fruits later during the early fall or late summer. The species is very similar to our native Sorbus americana, the American mountain ash, except the fruits tend to be smaller and they're darker red for our native species. Our native species is restricted to very cool, moist conditions, typically up in the mountains of the northeast. Another feature on all the ashes, the bark tends to be relatively smooth, but it has these distinct horizontal lenticels, which really give away its identity. The tree does not get much larger than the specimen here, nor does it live much beyond 50 to 75 years. So it should be viewed as really a temporary placement in the landscape. It is very attractive for a few decades, but then it does succumb to insects and disease. Sorbus occuparia, the European mountain ash.